All right, Danny X, what it is, honky? All right, we're, we're getting into it with uh, Uncle Chell here. We're talking about uh, Mark Hunt still being salty about his ongoing uh, lawsuit with UFC. Let's see what's going on with it. Or you were no more, Mark Hunt says in an interview. I, I didn't hear you. Was that Mark Hunt? Ma <laughs> Mark Hunt? <laughs> In a reaction to the announcement that the UFC was ending its USADA program starting in 2024. Quote, you can't... It's a total coincidence. Connor came back and they kicked out USADA. People was all like, well, well how is Connor going to possibly get past that six-month deal? They'll figure something out. <laughs> Dana was like, all right, all right, uh, USADA, you can fuck off now, thanks. We got some money to make. <laughs> They keep ripping fighters and their families off. The exodus from you criminals is already starting, says Hunt. The only scumbag gutter dog is you worthless effing mutt. Dana White continued, Mark Hunt, imagine waiting for my lawsuit to end so you could try to force USADA to put McGregor in without testing. Why make rules when you don't follow them? Or enforce them. Rules are made. Okay, those who make the rules make them to benefit them and to give them leverage over everyone else who's following the rules who they don't then have to follow. The, those who make the rules don't follow them. All right. The, the, the rules ain't for them. Those who make the rules aren't making the rules for them. All right. Well, it isn't over yet. Boy. Boy. All right. So, <laughs> I want to start at the beginning, and I want to personalize this. Here we go. Here we go. Do you know what I think? When he's putting the glasses down, that's how you know shit's about to get real, you know? <laughs> of Mark Hunt. You don't know my opinion of Mark Hunt. No, but I would love to know your opinion of Mike Hunt. <laughs> I know it. I gotta have fun with it. Fuck it. I think he's really tough. And I think he's really good. Yeah. And I think he's one of the few. He belongs in the same category with... Banger. He's just a banger, dude. You don't give two fucks. Yeah, I miss Mark Hunt, dude. Alex Pierre, Israel Adesanya, and you gotta go all the way back to Maurice Smith. That extremely rare category where a skilled kickboxer comes in to a free format fight right mixed martial art we have not seen very many stand-up only fighters who as adults <laughs> with no childhood experience as adults 24 25 in mark's case 30 years old before they ever go into their first grappling practice and they make it to the highest spots in the sport and whether Mark Hunt won a world championship or not, he's beaten a lot of guys that were world champions in MMA. So if he beat them at the wrong time, right? He beat them at a, he beat the right guys, but at the wrong time. I mean, he beat the world champions, but they didn't have the belt at the time. You know, that old chestnut. Or if you just go and look at the showcase match that he had at UFC 200 against Brock Lesnar, which is largely. What stems all of the anger that Mark Hunt has, but but if you look at that, I. <laughs> In that same category as Maurice Smith. And until recently, it was only the two of them. That is very rare air. And even now, there's four. And Izzy. Izzy's got to be on that list. And then Alex Pieta. Pieta. Pierre, Adesanya, Hunt, and Maurice. Four stand-up only guys. Who as children never practiced any kind of grappling. Had to go and humble themselves. And yeah, I'm stealing your thunder. That's what I'm doing here, bro. What is adults had to get thrown around practice rooms by teenagers when the whole you got enough thunder to go around it'll be all right all worlds looking and talking to them they're on the marquee they're going out to vegas they're going to headline arenas but they know the secret they're in practice with t that's who that's who does grappling it's one of the reasons that jujitsu gyms are full but you'll never drive down the street and see a wrestling gym like as well as wrestling has proven its effectiveness as a martial art you'll I ain't gonna lie, I was got my ass whipped by a good wrestler. A good wrestler that went all through uh, high school. They got that really solid, they're really good at control. 
because uh, I, I just I did jujitsu, you know, just white belt, just getting into it. But but you, man, when the wrestlers came in, I'm like, ah, oh, fuck, here we go, here we fucking go. Never see a wrestling gym, but like adults are aspiring, right? The local police force, these guys that are trying to to learn how to defend themselves, just in case. You'll you'll never see a wrestling class, just the way that it is. But to learn wrestling, it does exist. It's in our junior highs. It's in our high school. So if you want to learn it, at like you, you younger people these days, you, you don't even know how great you have it as far as uh, the ability to learn. Because when I was y'all's age, when UFC was first coming out, man, internet wasn't popping off with all these instructional videos like it is now. Like you had to pay. You know, like I had a friend and his whole family was was into it and stuff, and they spent a lot of money on the the Gracie Jiu-Jitsu instructional videos. You know, um, so so yeah, like if you wanted to get you know some good pay out the ass for it, and these days you can just go type it in and you find a whole bunch of uh, really good uh, top-notch instructionals, Gracie included, right there at your fingertips for free. So indulge in that for damn sure. Roll with it, chill. As an adult, you've got to humble yourself. You've got to go in and get beat. Yeah. Yes. Yes. You got to be able to swallow that there. I just got my ass whipped by a kid pill. Get thrown around, get outworked by 14 and 15 year old kids. It's a hard thing to do. I'm down. I'm down. Beat my ass, kids. What's up? It's a really hard thing to do. It's really rare. It's why most guys don't do it. So I bring that to you because I look at Hunt very favorably. And I like this style. I like this grit. You know, Hunt versus Bigfoot Silva, five rounds. All Just the heart, the heart of Hunt, man. Just the warrior. They got some warriors over there, man. And uh, I appreciate that. Keep them coming. Keep them coming. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my God. Five rounds is one of the worst ideas that we've ever had in this sport. Of everything that we've ever had in the sport that has passed and sustained, that's the one that I looked at and said. <laughs> now, Chell only says that because if it was four rounds, he would have won against Anderson Silva. Okay, it's that fifth round that got him. You know? <laughs> between between the five rounds and the knees and the elbows, uh, the mother Chell would have been champion, dude. I, I, I mean, like, instead of just the godfather of all MMA, I mean, what would you rather have, like a champion or, or be colloquially known as the godfather of MMA? I don't know. He's passing on golden nuggets left and right. That's really one of the biggest reasons why I decided to, I, I mean, I watch all Chell's videos anyway, but, like, th there's nuggets that he drops here and there that, that I pick up on, and I'm a fucking retard, and whenever I do, I'm like, God damn, look at that nugget there. But, um, so that's what I'm doing here. Roll with it. That's not going to work for a number of reasons. And I being supported at that time. And then Mark Hunt goes and fights Bigfoot Silva. And they put the greatest. I'm really interested in meeting Mark's brother, uh, Mike Hunt. <laughs> Heavyweight fight that I've ever seen. If we can roast Hams out with, with with the cum shots, we we can we can roast everyone, man. Troll life, whatever he is, honky. Still to this day, would any of you like to correct that or argue with that? I don't I don't think you would. And if you did, you would at a minimum concede to me, boy, it was one of them. For me, it's number one. It's the greatest heavyweight fight I've ever seen. In fact, it is the only heavyweight fight that I've ever seen. Yeah, I didn't see that one. I guess I have to go back and fucking watch it now. Um, there's been points in my life where I took like, just totally dipped out of the world for a year or two, you know, a couple different times. And to be honest, those were very peaceful years. I recommend it. Get you some, Izzy. Up until that point, and still to this day, that 25 minutes after the fight started, I was still invested and enthralled, and there was still just as much action. That is just a really rare thing for anybody to do, particularly with the heavyweights. But I, I'm complimenting Mark Hunt. Like, these are all just memories that I had. And I would have known who he is if he had never come to the UFC. I saw him over at Pride. I know what he did in K1. I know a lot about Mark Hunt. I read about him. I got some magazines, and he's on the cover. And Jill's a true fucking fan of the sport, man. He really is. But I wanted to look at him or respect it in the same way as I do had he not had his tenure within the UFC. And I only suggest that because that's the great irony of all this. The, the anger that Mark has towards the organization. It was a time within that organization.
that Mark's reputation and his legacy was formed, it was at least with me. Absolutely. And so it bothers that he never would have got to the pinnacle he reached without the UFC. Um. I think had he just, you know, went out there and, and kept beating motherfuckers' asses that was juiced up, you know. I mean, yeah, it, it sucks that they got an edge. Um, and But but when you beat their ass, that's just that much more for you. That's just a bigger notch in your belt, you know. Um, and, and, and if you lose and everyone knows they're all juiced up, I mean, what the fuck? They're juiced up. We all know it. I mean, how upset he is. And the lawsuit that he just had dismissed that took years of his life. Stopped him from getting fights. He was so angry. He could have gotten fights. He could have made millions of dollars. He doesn't do it because he's going to make millions of dollars another way, which is through the courtroom. What? And I was so confused who was giving him what? this advice. What? Yeah, that confuses me too. Like, I don't follow the logic. Okay, so I guess he's going to sue UFC and get a bunch of money that way. But he's just been bleeding out for years money trying to sue him. Like, how'd that work out for you, big guy? If he sought out lawyers and they said, look, this isn't up. I am absolutely against uh, uh, like a, a tyrannical monopoly. I am against that. So I absolutely appreciate Mark Hunt standing up and fighting against the UFC. I absolutely appreciate that. Um, and a lot of other fighters do, too. It, it, it's going to take if it wasn't for because um, there's multiple lawsuits, you know, with the if it wasn't for all that, then fighters wouldn't have. You know, they, they wouldn't have that sunset clause, you know, like that, that has definitely made a difference. You guys standing up and I appreciate it personally. Um, and, and it's like it was standing up for what's right or, or, or just playing ball to go along to get along just to get the, the bag. You know, that's a decision everyone's got to make for themselves. Still battle, but we'll, we'll take the case. Send over retainer and here's what we'll do. But we'll let you know right now there's not a huge precedence for this. This is going to be. An experiment. If they did that, more power to them. But if they didn't, if they made him believe that he had standing in this matter and that they had a reasonable belief that they were, well, he needs to sue his own attorneys. That is terrible advice. He never had a chance. Never. <laughs> and he might not know American laws. He might. I, I, don't, I don't know what it's like in New Zealand. I'm just telling you. That had no chance. And now I read the quote that I just read to you. And there's not one sentence in there. That is correct. And so now I'm starting to want laying down some golden nuggets for you. But like I said, it just comes down to what kind of life you want to live. You know, um, there definitely comes a point where you got to stand up for yourself. And that's up to every person in every situation. You know, that is the struggle of life. Who is giving Mark information? Is he gathering it himself? If he is, where is he going? Well, all he had to do is watch Chael Sonnen for free. That's all he had to do. Because I don't want to put it on Mark. I'm not ready to do that. I wanted to defend Mark. But if he's getting information from a media outlet in New Zealand, they are botching the reports. <clears throat> there is not one sentence of what I just read to you that is correct. Not one. So where did he get that information? Is he listening <laughs> loosely? Does Mark have something and it's a more sensitive issue? Is he being advised by the wrong people? Is he getting it through managers and trainers who are misunderstanding? I don't know what's happening here. There's not one sentence that he just said that's correct. The UFC ending their relationship with USADA, first off, is not the UFC ending or even slightly changing their drug testing policies. They are still going to have 365, 24-7. Well, you are happy to... Fuck. You're happy to go. Let's be honest, Chael. <laughs> After the way they kicked you out, you're happy to see him go. I know you is. Random testing. They're going to have a different company doing it. But the athletes will never feel that. The athletes will never know that. I mean, just by example, right? In a broad stroke. That's the UFC's business in terms of who they use. But it wouldn't matter if it was 800 
requested test or if it was Quest Diagnostics. It wouldn't matter if it was LabCorp. It wouldn't matter if it was your local CVS pharmacy. Your job would still be the same, right? It wouldn't matter who your employer chose to use for drug testing. <laughs> they will tell you at 11 o'clock on Tuesday, go down there and give a sample. You don't, you don't care who's doing it, right? But I'm, just, I'm just sharing with you. All right, now, um, you keep saying employer, but everyone is subcontractors. So that, that is actually not your employer. That is your contractor, and you are a subcontractor. There's big legal differences, and there's a lot of subcontractors out there who like to act like employers. They like to get the, the benefits of both because uh, when you're a subcontractor, you don't have all the tax liabilities and whatnot. So, and, and that's fine, you know, if you want to roll that way, but then don't turn around and sit there and try to act like an employer because there's a big fucking difference. And this is a personal issue for me because I, I had uh, something like that going on with one of my last employers, subcontractor. Mark came from a tone that the drug testing is going away. Not only is it not going away, it's not even changing. It will be the same for the athletes. Now, the UFC was to... It's just the doofus is giving away the jackets that's going away, that's all. The check to cover all of this, on that check, is going to write clean sport as opposed to USADA. But all the testing is done the same two laps. One in Salt Lake City, one on the campus of UCLA. All of the pro that will see this I did not know. And, and uh, of course Shell's gonna know all about that shit. So thank you for the nugget right there, man. The alignment that will be tested for is still gonna be set forth by the world anti-doping agency. WADA. Mm -hmm. Nothing is going to change. And the make-believe notion that the UFC wanted to do an exemption for Conor McGregor, which by the way, they have the right to do. <laughs> yeah i just remember uh you know you have to wait you have to wait half a year you know in the pool okay i was like okay the connor ain't <laughs> as soon as connor announces i'm coming back all right peace you sada kick rocks 100 percent of the legal right to do it they chose not to they chose to defer to what USADA called a principal stance, which is McGregor must return, must have a minimum of two clean tests, which is fully up to them to go and test him. That's a really weird thing. But six months. All right, the, the, the two clear tests is really weird. If you say he's going to sit in there for six months and he sits for six months, but you haven't come out and tested him. So no, it's eight, nine, ten more. We haven't tested him. But you've got the right to test him. I'm just sharing for you, like, we're not ever going to go down that road. It's just a really weird thing. Moreover, it turned out that the UFC agreed with USADA. The breakup had nothing to do with McGregor. USADA chose to use McGregor when they put out a press release that was extremely inappropriate. Uh, <laughs> You're Dana's boy, chill. <laughs> As far as USADA and the stance that they had with the UFC, they were in a negotiation. Boy spelled B-O-I, not B-O-Y. <laughs> Row That's with... it. And USADA came out to their own clients, their own customers, the UFC, and they buried them. And they said something <laughs> that's not true. It was that the UFC was planning to stop testing, and moreover, that the genesis of this was the idea that they did not want Conor McGregor to have to sit and have the two tests over a six-month period. And the UFC said that is not true. And of course, we know that is not true. Fallacy. Michael Chandler knows that is not true. <laughs> there oh, man, you're not helping. You're not helping, chill. Just... Leave all the juice monkeys out of it. Yeah, and Drickus Duplissy knows it too. And, and that other Russian motherfucker they just took on, he knows it too. <laughs> I find it super convenient. You know, as soon as Usada's gone, all of a sudden they're getting some brand new motherfuckers in the UFC that you can tell is juice. There's no venue book. There was no on sale. Conor McGregor is not in a training camp. He does not have inside information and a date that's set. He has no... 
and I'm not against uh, the juice. I just want to see an even playing field. Like, even if it comes down to having an enhanced division, you know, and, and a natural division, you know, I'm good with that. Just, just as long as it's an even playing field. And, uh, I mean, that's how I feel about it. I don't know about everyone else. Eight. None of those words were true. They weren't true when Usada said it. They're not true when Mark is... Now, the biggest thing that you can uh, gleam off of Chael's videos is creating your own reality as you go. And, and we all do it. You know, don't look around all accusatory and shit. We all do it. And that's actually a... Uh, <laughs> it, that's... Oh, yeah, I'll, I'll get into that. I'll leave that shit for, for uh, other videos, not Chael's. Same. Much as I like Mark and I do appreciate what he's done. I like Mark, what he did through seeing him in the UFC, the very organization that he's so angry about. And if the things that he would... Appreciate what you do, Chael, man. He's still doing it. You, f you fucking helped save the UFC back then, and you're still pushing it forward to this day. Uh, uh, Colby Covington, Sean Strickland, uh, uh, I mean... You know, even Dil Dylan Dennis took some tips from you to to boost his stock. You know, so man, Godfather of MMA right there, dude. Saying we're true, he'd have every right to be mad. He'd have every right to be made whole. He'd have every right to get a check and a judgment against them. He'd have every right to be furious. But they're not true. He's not right on any of it. <laughs> And I'm highly curious where he's getting. <laughs> yeah, I mean, whatever Chell says goes. I mean, you can't be right now. Such inaccurate information. All right, Mark Hunt, what you got to do is you got to reach out to Chell and he can get your career jump started again, dude, for serious. All right, th this is uh, the dark light and the bad guy once again. Uh, thanks for hanging with me. Uh, I'm going to keep it rolling, y'all. Have a good day, man.